as soon as you hear your name, a part of you knows that person cared enough to either learn it or remember it, but most importantly, use it. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces. I also bring you ideas and techniques that you can grab and use to set goals, create, and unlock your potential for changing yourself and the world. And now let's get to the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. I want to talk today about something that I wrote a <laughs> Facebook rant about the other day, and it has to do with friend. I received three emails the other morning, and they all started with, hey, friend, and I had to say something. For me, this is for me, I dislike it when people call me friend, as in, hey, friend, can you do me a favor? Or hi, friend, I'd like to be on your podcast. Because it feels generic and like it was manufactured by people who cannot be bothered to use the freaking mail merge in their email blasts. It's not hard, right? Just use like the carrot hashtag F name or however your CRM does it. But the thing is, it's really spilled over into both personal and business relationships. People will call me friend in real life or in emails, etc. And and I'm speaking honestly for me, although I have research to back up and ideas from people better at communicating than I am that say that it's better to use the person's name. But I'll talk about that in a minute. See, here's the thing. If you have an impetus to do that for me, please don't. It feels presumptive, right? It feels presumptive in a couple of ways. If you're not friends, it presumes a friendship that doesn't exist. And if you are friends, then you're close enough so you can either use the person's name or maybe if you're really good friends, hey, might suffice depending again on how close you are to that person. For me, my preference is if we're friends, please use my name. Or if we're close, we can both be cool with just a, hey, see, I know that language is changing and maybe I'm showing my age, but there are certain parts of it that I'm not comfortable with. And here's why, okay? Even friend has become friend. And I recognize that that's people in the Web3 space, right? But I just saw a tweet that said, GM friends, spelled F-R-E-N-S. And I get it. As I said, it's some of the Web3 space, and I know that's the parlance, but it kind of rubs me the, lo- the wrong way. It feels like it feels like Leet from the 90s, right? And I knew Leet. I could read it. I just never used it because it was, I understand that on some level you're in with the in crowd when you use stuff like that. But on the other hand, it feels manufactured to me. It just, it just does, right? So it feels, yeah, it feels manufactured and it feels kind of lazy. Like you can't spell out the entire word. And I get that's how people in the space are communicating. But is that a good thing? Are we losing something by doing this kind of generic manufactured language? Right. And I get that I'm what I'm talking about are social niceties. And I get that maybe I'm a fuddy duddy, but I think it matters. It matters to be respectful. It matters to not be so lazy that you can't even be bothered to write out the person's name. And also, it's about mindfulness. If you take the time to focus on the person and on what you want to say to that person, won't that just improve your interaction? If we keep thinking of the people in our lives as people instead of, quote, Friends, F-R-E-N-S, unquote, will deepen the relationships we have, and that can only benefit all of us, right? And here's the thing. I will say this. As part of this entire Facebook discussion, several people indicated to me that the word friend is being used as an inclusive term when someone's gender identity and or name might or might not be in flux. And that is totally cool, obviously, and I get it. But my friend Sarah pointed out, care enough to check right? My pronouns, for example, are easy to find on any social media platform that allows them. It takes no time to check. So I invite you to care enough to check. And as my friend Lee said, she said, treat me as an individual, 
right? This is a treat me as an individual thing. And if you want something from me, if you want me to read your book, if you want me to put you on my podcast, my preference is that you check, right? Check my pronouns. Check what I prefer. Check what anybody prefers if you can find it before you contact them, right? Going, hey, friend, it feels like you put that into your email blast and it does not make for any sort of actual interaction or connection. In fact, I think it cheapens them, honestly, right? If you if you want something from me, if you want something from a potential employer, if you want to be on their podcast, if you want them to help you out with something, if you're trying to sell them something, Right. If you I mean, so many entrepreneurs and other people are sending these email blasts every week to go, hey, I'm checking in with you or, hey, I heard this amazing thing or this might be a value to you. But if you started out with friend, it feels generic. It feels like you didn't actually check in. And how do you know if they're just a friend and they're not the person that you might actually want to be talking with? How do you know if it's going to be of benefit to them, right? So if you're an entrepreneur and you're selling me something, basically, here's the way it is. If I receive an email that says, hey, friend, I've got this cool new way of podcasting that will do X or, hey, friend, I've got a new uh, weight loss regimen or a get fit regimen or a vegans are us regimen since I'm vegan. I got to tell you, if you start with friend, I'm going to just delete it before I ever read what you've said, at least find my name because I I get it, right? I I personally find it generic and useless if you just go, hey, friend, but I also get that people want to avoid gender binary turns of phrase. But if you're writing to me and I, and, and again, my pronouns are out there. I'm not gender fluid. I have a set name. I have a set identity. Calling me friend instead of figuring it out and going, hey, this is, you know, this is as old as her pronouns are she, her. I know that I can totally write to her. It takes a little more time. It takes a little more effort, but I think it's worth it because, again, it makes for more authentic, real connections and interactions, right? That's the thing. Honestly, for me, it's do your research. If you care about the interaction, do your research. If you're writing something and you're not sure, that's fine. But if you've done your research, then you know that you can either be sure because you've got the information or... You know that you're not sure, and then friend might be a much more appropriate thing to say, right? Personally, I'm always of the mind that you should do your research, find out the person's name, and if the name is in flux, if they're going through a transition of one way or another, then that's a different story. But if you know that they have a set name, that their identity is set, that they're, you know, that they've basically put it on on social media, it's pretty easy to check. Twitter allows you to do it. Zoom allows you to do it. Uh, Instagram allows you to do it. Check and see if they have an Instagram account. Does it have their pronouns? If it does, then you're good to go, right? That's the thing. You can easily find, for me, you can find my pronouns on the social media sites that allow them. There's no ambiguity there. But as I said, it takes a little more time and a little more effort. So that's the way I want to look at all of this, right? That's the way I want to say all of it. And I want to say that I had this rant and it it ended up with a huge, huge discussion because another friend of mine, Giselle, said, well, then let's talk about what it means to be friends. And that's a whole nother kettle of corn that I would like to get into at some point. And she's going to write an essay about it. And frankly, I, I'm going to probably invite her on the podcast to come talk about it because we we are a categorizing species. We like to know what's what. And there are times when things are in flux. And I completely get that. But when they're not in flux, and it takes very little effort to check, then you can only deepen your conversations with people because they will feel like you cared enough to figure out their name. Honestly, that is a big deal. And the reason I'm saying it this way, and the reason I said, hey, I'm going to have some backup Uh, information on this. Dale Carnegie wrote what is considered to be one of the best communication books ever written, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And whatever you think of the name of the book, because some people go, that sounds slimy, whatever. The information in the in the pages of that book is incredibly useful if what you want is to build and develop authentic, real relationships with people, whether or not they're personal or business. And he said, this about a person's name. And I'm quoting, remember 
that a person's name is, to that person, the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Why? And I'm, the, I'm done with the quote now. Why? Because frankly, as soon as you hear your name, a part of you knows that person cared enough to either learn it or remember it, but most importantly, use it. Big, big, huge thing. Alrighty, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. This is Isolde Trachtenberg. And again, if you want to learn more about that, if you need some coaching around how to communicate a little bit better, uh, drop me a line and or book a free complimentary discovery call. I'd love to get to know what you're what you're doing, what you're going through, and see if maybe we can work together so I can help you communicate better, go further on your path, and build the life you want to be living. All righty. Uh, the, the discovery call link, by the way, is right there in the show notes. Feel free to grab it and use it. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.